So here's an example of a fairly significant chlorosis in a white oak. And you can see behind it, very close proximity, a perfectly green white oak. So I was driving to work this morning and saw various stages of chlorosis right in my neighborhood. And I thought, well, it'd be a good time to do a little, uh, you know, Instagram or, or YouTube post on chlorosis because I've got several different examples of, of decreasing health in, in white oaks. So I'm here with my sidekick. Can you see her? <laughs> and we're going to look at these trees. So here's an example of a healthy white oak. It's nice and green, deep green color. And behind it, you can see it, kind of a chlor chlorotic one. That's, that's a second tree. But here next to it, you can see kind of beginning stages of chlorosis. Uh, pretty yellow at the top. It's greener towards the bottom. And then, you know, this, this whole lead over here is pretty yellow. And there's no tip decline yet. I mean, I see a little dead branch there. Uh, a couple, couple dead branches, but there's no real decline. So the tree's kind of surviving, but if you look at the base, you know, that's highly impacted, retaining walls, you know, rock, uh, various things that might increase the pH level in the soil. And this, this healthy one, you can see it's in a, you know, somewhat watered lawn and, you know, lots of root zone and it's got good environment. Now that one next door is slightly chlor chlorotic and it's got a similar situation in a lawn, but there may be a pH difference between these two properties. And, and so this one, you know, has good, good iron content. There's, I mean, you could say there's maybe some flagging of color in there, of yellow, yellowing color in this tree, but overall it's very healthy you know, canopy. Uh, and so we'll, we'll look at a one that has a further, further stage of yellow. And over time, this weakens the tree and two line chestnut bore can come in and start doing some damage. And we'll look at those stages. So here's an example of a fairly significant chlorosis in a white oak. And you can see behind it, very close proximity. A perfectly green white oak and so let's look at the basal environment of this tree so we've got you know some building around here we've got another dog and the other one's out in the middle of a yard so uh, this one is in a much harsher uh, you know root zone it's been affected by construction over the years. And there might be some limestone uh, at the foundation of that wall and the, the garage that contributes to maybe a high pH at the base of this tree. And so, uh, you know, some augmentation of those situations could help this tree out quite a bit. Now here's an example of a tree that was in severe chlorosis. And I've got an explanation for the green branches on this now, but you can see the tip decline here. Uh, anytime you see yellow branches and tip decline, probably two line chestnut borer has moved in and begun to do its thing. And this tree is in pretty steep decline, but you can see the greener branches down below. And this tree may have been completely banana yellow, and I would anticipate it was. And now as there's been some dieback, it has begun to green up on some of the, the stuff that's closer to the ground. And on that, that one side there is pretty green. And so now that could have to do with, you know, there's, there's a better pH out in this part of the lawn that feeds that side of the tree. Or it could be just as a tree has died back, you know, a good, well, a good quarter of the canopy is gone from that lead. And so the tree has, you know, less to take care of and it can subsequently rebound with that 
you know, defensive dieback. But I posit that it's not just a defensive dieback. It was two line chestnut bore uh, getting involved and, and, you know, making this tree decline. And so that, that's what can be avoided by, by taking mitigating steps. And we'll talk about those mitigating steps in a minute. Keep in mind, there are plants that are variegated by nature. <laughs> Do not treat this for chlorosis, uh, along with Norway maple, variegated Norway maple. I did hear of somebody treating a variegated Norway maple for chlorosis, and that's somewhat humorous, but it does happen. So there's a barberry, a purple barberry, and there's a variegated barberry. Now here's an example of a tree that was once banana yellow. And we haven't done any treatment on this tree. This is actually my mother-in-law's tree. <laughs> she lives just six tenths of a mile from me. And uh, you can see a major lead had died. And now, now there's a 12 inch diameter uh, big branch that's all the way dead. And that, that was chlorosis and probably two line chestnut bore. And so that, that's got to come off this year. Um, but since the canopy is re greatly reduced, this has naturally greened up. And I think we, we might have done one treatment years ago, but um, overall it has less canopy and so then it, it starts to thrive a little bit better. But at any rate, chlorosis is kind of in the neighborhood. You know, this tree has a pretty good environment. It's all kind of woodsy here, but yet the pH in this area is probably bad. And so this tree is, is pretty yellow. Um, and so there's various things we can do uh, for chlorosis. We can, uh, a lot of times we'll air spade out the base and do a little root inspection, see if we've got limited root health. Then we can do, apply uh, Cambostat growth regulator. That will help with fine root development and reduce the canopy growth while increasing that fine root development, uh, which can help the, the different you know, balance of, of fine nutrients that might get into the tree. Uh, then we add more mulch. You know, in this case, this doesn't need a lot of mulch because it's got kind of a natural environment. Uh, but we uh, add biochar into that air spaded cavity. Then we'll we'll add a bunch of biochar compost, and and then we'll also include probably a two line chestnut borer treatment and um, an FAC injection, ferric ammonium citrate, which. Uh, Rainbow has a product, Verdure, which is essentially uh, ferric ammonium citrate. And so uh, those things will give a three year bounce back to this. We, we could pop this one green uh, with those uh, combination of treatments. And then in three more years, we would evaluate. And sometimes you can get it to, to totally recoup and go on its own after that or you do another you know, three year treatment of that and get it green. And we really have a lot of success uh, popping them green. And there's nothing that will please a client more than bringing it from you know, banana yellow to a dark green. Uh, it's really an effective uh, way to please a client. And it's rewarding as an arborist to be able to say, hey, we have really mitigated a serious situation and turned around a you know a long-lived tree that's probably a you know 80 to 120 year old tree right there and we could elongate that life significantly so game of trees we're having fun we'll finish our walk now it's a beautiful day other than the smoke <laughs> that is in the air i don't know look at the lake here you can kind of see the fog across the lake Canada smoke in the air. Come on, Pooch. Three.
when you're playing the game of trees.